guys, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. If you have been here before, welcome back. Today I want to talk about the not so glamorous topic of being in a rut. I think everyone has been in a rut at some point in their lives. I think some people's ruts are a little more severe than others. Some people's ruts last for a couple days. Some people's ruts last for a couple weeks, a couple months, however long it may be. And if you're anything like me, then your rut might have a tendency to spiral into full-blown depression. Ruts can look like a lot of different things for a lot of different people. However you choose to describe it for yourself, there's the universal feeling of that, that stuck feeling that, that, that comes with the rut. That's a universal feeling. Having just come out of a rut myself, probably, well, definitely within this last month, I wanna share the five ways that really helped me to start putting one foot in front of the other. And I know that for a lot of people that feels like the biggest task in the entire world. I get it, I've been there, I, I fully, empathize and sympathize with how you are feeling right now. So I'm gonna give you these five steps and if you just start doing one of them, just start with one of them and just see if you just start to feel a little bit better and then a little bit better and then you start to add and then you start to add and then all of a sudden, I swear, all of a sudden you wake up one day and you're like, I think I, I think I feel okay today. I like, I, I think I'm, I think I'm happy today. I think this is what this is supposed to feel like. It's a pretty magical moment and, and I've had a couple of those aha moments in my life and the one from this past episode that I was in was probably one of the biggest aha moments of my life and I think that it's genuinely on the path to changing my life. So I wanna share the five ways that I helped myself get to this point. This is bigger than getting a morning routine. It is bigger than drinking some green juice. It is bigger than forcing yourself to go work out every single day. Those are all great things and I think that they do all have a place in different people's lives and in different capacities, but these are more fundamental fundamental steps that I think that it takes to begin to even start to do those more habitual things. Okay, so first up, probably my biggest piece of advice and one that I just this past time took for myself, tell someone. You need to tell someone what you're going through. You don't have to tell anyone your deepest, darkest, biggest secrets. You don't have to overshare, but I promise if you talk to someone and tell them about what you're going through, one, you won't feel so alone because I promise you're never as alone as you think you are. The minute that you voice it out loud, it makes other people feel comfortable to then voice their own thoughts out loud. And I think that we forget that as humans, even though our specific circumstances and experiences may be vastly different from each other, the feelings that we feel as human beings are a lot more universal than we think. So tell someone talk about it. It will make you feel like you have community again. It will make you feel less alone. Also, telling someone takes the pressure off of having to pretend to be and feel a way that you just don't at that current moment in time. There's something to be said about how lonely it can feel to be in a really bad headspace. There's something to be said about how you feel like you're on an island. I remember, okay, so when I was really going through this, I wrote down in my journal my interpretation of how it felt. And it, to me, I wrote down that it felt like I was in Times Square, in the middle of Times Square, in a glass box, so everyone could see in, I could see out. I was in a glass box and I was banging against the wall for someone to come and help me, but no one saw me. That's how I explained it because it felt like I was sitting there like in my own head, I'm sitting there thinking like, why does no one understand? Why is no one asking me if I'm okay? Why is no one trying to lend me any help? Do they not see how bad I'm struggling? How do you not see how deeply I am in this? How do you not see what is going on with me? How does no one recognize that anything is going on with me? I'm sitting here in my head banging for someone to just come help me but I never told anyone what I was going through. So how can I sit there and expect people to understand what is going on in here and, and even begin to think of ways to help me or just be there in a supportive way? 
if, if I can't even voice what's going on with me, if I can't even put into words how I'm feeling or where I'm at, how can I expect other people to be, to be able to lend a helping hand? I can't. I have, you have to tell someone. And this past time is the first time that I've ever done that. And I let it go on for almost a month and a half before I did finally talk to someone. And I don't know how to explain. It wasn't this aha moment. It wasn't this, I walked away from the conversation and I was like, ah, oh, I feel so much better. Like, I feel so much lighter. Like this is, I'm good. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like that at all. I just walked away from the conversation and nothing profound happened. I cried. I cried. It was a release of energy, but more so after the fact, I had people come up and hug me. I received a couple of messages afterwards. I did this in a little bit of a public setting, which was, it was a public setting, but it was with, with like all of my closest friends. So maybe I'll share that story at some point, but I received a couple messages afterwards of like, thank you so much for opening up. Like I deal with the exact same thing that you're explaining and it was really powerful that, you know, you felt okay to be vulnerable like that and talk about that. Or I would have never thought that you were going through that. I'm so sorry that, you know, I didn't notice it. And I, if you can let me know like how I can be there for you. Like those are the kind of messages I received. And the scariest part of opening up about it was that I thought that no one would understand. I thought that there's no way that anyone will understand how I am feeling right now because it's just me, I'm alone on this island and I just feel like I'm fighting off things left and right. There's no way that anyone will understand how I'm feeling. And then the minute that I finally expressed how I was feeling, <sighs> I really wasn't alone and people really were there for me and people really did want to help me and it took away the shame. It took away the shame of how I was feeling. It took away the disappointment in myself of how I was feeling because I think that it's a really human emotion and a really human place to be. But I think that our, our personal shame and guilt can make it feel so much heavier than it even is. So, First piece of advice and, and one that I can attest to its power is talk to someone. Doesn't have to be a professional. Look, if you can afford professional help, go talk to a therapist. I think that every single person should go to therapy, even if you are feeling good, if you are feeling bad, I think that everyone should go to therapy. I personally could not afford it at the time. There was no place in my budget to be able to go to therapy. So I really had to lean on those that were closest to me and, and hope and pray that these relationships were what I thought they were. And they were, I, it was my own head making everything seem 10 times worse than it really was. So tell someone, talk about it, release yourself of your personal pressures. All right, next up. Have one thing every day that you can be successful at. And it does not have to be a big thing. For me, when I was really in the depths of it, my one thing that I could be successful at every single day was cleaning. I cleaned, when I started to clean my apartment every single day, I don't know, it was, it was the act of looking at my clean apartment after the fact and being like, okay, like I did that, check. I checked that box, like I, that makes me feel good. I feel good about the fact that my space is clean. I feel good about the fact that how I feel on the inside is no longer reflected on the outside because when I get in a really bad headspace, dishes are everywhere, clothes are everywhere, clothes stay in basket, clothes stay dirty on the floor, I've got dishes all over my coffee table, I've got dishes all in my sink, like my bathroom looks a wreck. It just is an actual reflection of how I feel on the inside. I feel so discombobulated and all over the place on the inside and my space reflects it. So what did I do every day? I woke up and I made my bed and then before I went to bed every night, I picked up my entire apartment. I cleaned it up. I did all of my dishes. I wiped down my counters. I picked up everything in my living room. I folded all of my blankets. I made sure that my bathroom was picked up, put all of my clothes in the dirty clothes basket. I can't explain it. It's a very therapeutic feeling to one, to wake up to a very clean space every single morning, but two, to end your day feeling like you succeeded at something. I succeeded in making my space clean. So for me, I 
I like to clean. For you maybe though, maybe your one thing you can be successful at every day is maybe getting your skids, kids to school on time every single day. Maybe it's making yourself a full breakfast in the morning every single day. Maybe it's, maybe it is going to the gym every single day. Whatever it is, have one thing every day that you, when you're done doing it, you can be like, I succeeded at that. I checked that off my list. If all else goes to shit that day, this one thing I did really, really well and I succeeded at it, I swear. It's all about starting to build self-love again, self-respect again, dependence upon yourself again. It's all about starting to trust yourself again, okay? Next up, all right, so you've told someone what's going on. You have one thing every single day that you can feel proud of that you succeeded at. Next up, I want for you to find something in your day-to-day -day life that gives you purpose. I don't mean finding your life's purpose right now, although I think that that is an incredible thing and should be a goal for everyone to find their life's purpose. When you're in this kind of headspace, you don't have room to be thinking like that. You are just trying to get through the day, you are trying to put one foot in front of the other, and you are trying to wake up in the morning and go to bed at night and start to feel better about yourself. You can't, there, there just is no room for big grandeur, what's my life's purpose thinking. And honestly, when you start thinking that big, trust me, I know the anxiety goes through the roof and you start to freak out a little bit. So instead, what I mean is to find something in your day-to-day -day life that gives you passion and gives you purpose again. When I was in the real depths of, of my episode, Louie was my day-to-day -day purpose, my, my little man Louie, okay? He had, I had to wake up every day and I had to feed him. I had to wake up every day and I had to go outside and I had to walk him. He had needs to support his life and I was his entire lifeline. So there was no room for me to not get out of bed in the morning at some point. There was no room for me to sit on my couch for 16 hours a day and just not move, even though that is exactly what I wanted to do. There was no room for that because I had something's life depending upon me, okay? So for me, it was Louie. I'm not telling you to go out and buy a dog to get you out of the headspace you are in, but I do think dogs are incredibly therapeutic and animals in general, having to care for something else, I think is a really good purpose in your everyday life. You know, after, at once my once my headspace started to clear a little bit and I was able to start thinking a little bit bigger than just taking care of the living, breathing animal that was sitting next to me, finding a purpose in my everyday life turned into finding a hobby. I think that there is not enough emphasis on having a hobby as an adult. I think that for me personally, I grew up with sports. I mean, I was always in sports and school was a really big hobby of mine. So my life, was pretty much consumed with I was either studying at night or I was at practice at night. There was really no just like downtime for me to like wonder what I was doing or was I doing anything with my life. I didn't really have that, right? But then you get to be an adult and no one really talks about having a hobby, right? You have all of this, at least I had all of this downtime where I was just like mindlessly watching TV or mindlessly scrolling through my phone. And all of a sudden it would be like four hours at night that I was just like, oh, I didn't do anything productive with that time, right? So I had never had a hobby as an adult. And I don't think a lot of adults Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know that a lot of adults have a true hobby. And by hobby, I mean it's something that you do simply because you enjoy it. Simply because it brings you happiness, it brings you joy, it is how you like to devote your spare time. If you had your ideal day where you had no other responsibilities and no one else was needing anything from you, this is how you would choose to spend your time, right? This is something that you would ideally like to do during your ideal day, okay? For me, it started out as, I had to really think about the progression of how I got to doing what I'm doing now. But for me, this space that I was in, this headspace that I was in was at the end of 2022 and, um, Right towards the end of 2022, my friend suggested that we do the Whole30 program, which if you haven't seen any of my videos for Whole30, I highly suggest you watch them. That was really like the catalyst for, 
I think my life changing as a whole, but suggested that we do the Whole30 program. And I was super into it. I was like, okay, like this is, I've been looking for a sign. I've been looking for something to kind of sink my teeth into. And in turn, I wanted to, I had made like two really short YouTube videos for work, for real estate. And I was like, okay, well, what if I, do YouTube videos for Whole30. What if I like document all of it and I really wanted this month to be life-changing for me. That was like something that I just kept thinking about and kept wanting for myself was that I wanted this to change my life. And so I documented the whole thing and it's wild because two things happened that I didn't expect. One, I absolutely fell in love with making these videos fell in love with the entire process. I mean, I watch so many YouTube videos about making YouTube videos. <laughs> it is a, where I spend a lot of my time trying to make these videos better and understand how to use this fancy camera I have and lighting and editing and all of that that goes into it. And then also doing Whole30, that was just all about me, okay? So that was just all about getting to the healthiest version of myself. And so one, I had a, a newfound hobby in YouTubing. And two, I became my hobby. My health became my hobby. My headspace became my hobby in those 30 days. And I think it's the healthiest hobby that maybe one could have. And I think that if you don't know where to start, and if you're if you're watching this video and you're saying, I have no idea what I would even want my hobby to be. Like, it's so cool that you fell into that and it just like happened to be like something that you really loved doing, but I have no idea what I want my hobby to be. I've never really enjoyed anything. I get that as well been there before. This is not my first time thinking that I need a hobby. Okay. So if you don't know what your hobby is, or you have nothing that just comes to mind, that's like, I think I want to try that. Make yourself your hobby, make your health and your headspace, your hobby. Okay. Devote yourself to self-development, start reading some books, start watching some YouTube videos, really dive into that. Make yourself your hobby if you don't know what else it is. But maybe, hey, maybe hiking's your hobby. Maybe gardening's your hobby. Maybe starting to do DIY projects is your hobby. There is no rhyme or reason or what is right or what is wrong when it comes to having a hobby. The whole purpose is for you to have something that you love and that you are passionate about and that when your spare time rolls around, that is how you would like to spend it. That is the whole point of it. It's supposed to breathe a little passion back into your life again. And the fun part is, is that I don't even think you're supposed to be good at it at first. Actually, I know for a fact I was not good at it at first and I'm still on a journey to getting better at it, but I had no idea what I was doing making these videos at first. I mean, I watched hours of other YouTube videos just trying to figure out how to shoot my first video, okay? When it comes to my health and wellness, I had to read multiple books and multiple websites and articles on how to do Whole30. I had no idea what I was doing, but it was a step, right? And I think that that's the most fun part about having a hobby is that you're not supposed to be good at it at first. It's supposed to be something that you devote your time to, you devote yourself to, and you get better at. And that's what breeds that self-confidence, that self-respect, and that self-love. So find a hobby, find something that you enjoy doing, find something that breathes a little life back into you again. All right, next up. And I know people might whine about this one, especially if you're, if you're really deep into a funk, you're gonna be like, oh God, I've heard that one before, please shut up. You need to get up and you need to go outside. You need to put your shoes on, you need to get up and you need to go outside. There is something to be said about breathing in fresh air that is just good for your body. When you sit inside of your four walls, your walls, I always felt like my walls were literally starting to cave in. I mean, I was just like, I have been staring at this same place for far too long but you don't want to get up. That's like the last thing that you'd want to do. It feels like it's going to take all of the energy in the world for you to just go do a simple walk around your block. And you know what? You can go outside for one minute, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, two hours. It doesn't matter. I just want you to get up and I want you to go outside. One, it's about breathing in the fresh air, but two, get around other people, go to a park, Get around people that are outside, maybe walking, maybe doing some exercise, maybe they have a dog, maybe they're playing frisbee. Like it doesn't matter, I want you to get outside and I want you to get around other people. 
you don't have to talk to anyone. You don't have to acknowledge anyone else's existence. You can sit there and you can sit on a bench and people watch for all I care. I just want you to get outside and I want you to see that life is continuing to move outside of your four walls. That was so big for me. I have a little tiny dog park. It's literally right behind my apartment and Sometimes there's not anyone there. Sometimes there's a lot of people there, but there were times where obviously I had to get up and I had to walk Louie. He had to go pee, but I would get up and instead of walking him, because I just didn't have the energy to walk him that day. And I just, it was the last thing I wanted to do. So I would go and I would sit in these little Adirondack chairs outside at this park. And I would just sit and he would run around and he would play. I didn't talk to anyone. There were other people there. I didn't have the energy to talk to anyone. I didn't have the energy to actually take him on a walk, but I sat down outside. I didn't play on my phone. There was none of that. I just sat. I just sat and enjoyed being outside for that 10, 15 minutes, whatever it was. And then I would come back in and it was weird. I would, I would, I would just feel a little better. I would just feel a little like, okay, maybe now it's time to pick up my apartment. I went outside, I got some fresh air. Maybe now it's time to do that thing every day that I succeed at, right? So I'm gonna pick up my apartment now. So go outside, sit outside, enjoy some fresh air, see some people around you moving and shaking and, and living life again. And remember that that's the goal. That's what you wanna be doing. You wanna be outside, you wanna be enjoying your life, you wanna be laughing with your friends again. Get around that, feel that environment, enjoy it. If it's too cold to be outside, which right now I'm in Georgia and it's not nearly as cold as other places in the country, but it's cold. I don't really like to just sit outside for the hell of sitting outside. So maybe you, maybe you go to a coffee shop, maybe you go to a coffee shop and you sit down and maybe you do some work on your computer or maybe you read a book or maybe you're listening to some music and just people watching i just want you to get outside of your house and i want you to get around other people i want you to remember what that feels like to be an integral part of a community okay that's what i want you to do and last but not least, piggybacking off of getting outside and getting back into society, this is for all of my work from homers, okay? I know when COVID happened and everyone started working from home, everyone just absolutely loved it. This is gonna be life-changing, no more nine to five in the office every day. This is great, this is sick. And it was, I think it was for a little while, but at least for me personally, work from home life 24 seven, I absolutely cannot do it. I do not think that it's healthy for humans, especially if you live alone as I do. It is really unhealthy for me to sit inside of these same four walls every single day, never speak to another human, Unless I go hang out with my friends, there are, were times where I didn't speak to another person Monday through Friday. I just, and maybe sometimes I would talk to like someone on the phone or like my family on the phone, but like there was no face-to-face -face interaction with another human being for like five days. That's insane. The same place, the same walls, the same place I live, eat, and breathe every single day. I never leave that space. And I just think that that is super unhealthy. I don't think it's, I just don't think that that's how human beings are meant to live. I challenge you, if you are a work from homer and you are feeling really down, I challenge you, get a shower, get yourself ready. I mean ready, I mean like office ready, right? Do your hair, do your makeup. I want you to put on an outfit that makes you feel good about yourself. Maybe it's a tie if you're a man, maybe it's a pair of heels if you're a woman, maybe being in comfy, maybe being in a really comfy, cute set makes you feel cute and makes you feel good. I want you to put on an outfit that makes you feel good. I want you to look good. I want you to feel good. I am a huge proponent of the saying, look good, feel good, do good. It is a full body experience, right? When I look good, I feel good. When I feel good, I do my best work. They all go together. And again, this all goes back to cultivating that self-love and that self-respect and that self-discipline. And then I want you to go work from somewhere other than your house, whether it be a coffee shop, whether it be a co-working space, whether it be in a park and you have Wi-Fi, whatever it is, I don't care. I want you to go work around other human beings that are also working. I think that there's something to be said about an office environment. One, you're outside of the same place where you reside, 
because I don't think it's healthy to be in the same place 24 seven. But also you're around other people that are also on a productive wave, right? Like the energy is productive around you. People are moving, people are talking, people are getting things done. There's a very productive energy about an office space. And I don't think that we have to be in an office from nine to five every day. I don't think that that's how life is meant to be lived. But I do think that we need the community feeling of being around other human beings during the day. So that's why go to a coffee shop, go sit around in a coffee shop. I guarantee you, if you, if, if you live anywhere near Starbucks, or maybe a specialty coffee shop. I love adventuring into different coffee shops, but go to a coffee shop. There's someone working in a coffee shop near you. I guarantee it. Just go sit down with your computer, with your things, and work from somewhere other than your house. And then I want you to really evaluate your own product productivity, right? I am so much more productive when I am outside of my house. I think it's the energy around me right? Other people aren't taking a break and doing their laundry and taking a break and watching, you know, 30 minutes of a show or taking a break and doing their dishes. No, we're all there. We're all working. We're all getting everything done. So if you are in a rut, I challenge you to do these five things and then let me know how you feel. All right. I challenge you to tell someone, I challenge you to talk about it. I challenge you to have one activity every single day you can feel successful at. I challenge you to find a purpose in your day-to-day -day life. I challenge you to go outside and and I challenge you to work from somewhere other than your home. Do those five things. Maybe they're, maybe they're stepping stones. Maybe you do one and then you do another and then you do another. Maybe you try and do them all five at once, whatever you feel like you are personally ready for. But I challenge you to make those five changes in your life and let me know how you feel. Okay. I'm not saying that it's going to be easy. I actually think that it's going to be an absolute chore when you first start doing it, depending how deep you are into your rut. I'm telling you, it, it might feel like an absolute chore. It might be something that you need to make a list for every single day for these five items and you need to check them off every single day. It might take you a couple days to get into a rhythm of it. It might take you a couple weeks. I just challenge you to start because you have to start somewhere or else you're never going to get out of the cycle that you are in. You are going to be stuck on this merry-go-round if you do not make the active, proactive decision to make changes in your life. So I challenge you to make these five changes and let me know how you feel. The whole point of all of this is to find your spark again. You have to find a passion. You have to find a purpose. You have to have a point to waking up and doing this thing called life every single day. And I promise if you take these five steps and you embody them and you really explore yourself and explore what you like to do and explore how you like to spend your time, I promise you, you, you will feel that spark again. It might not happen overnight. It might happen overnight but you will start to feel a little lighter, a little brighter. Waking up in the morning will feel a little bit easier. You will just start to remember what it feels like to not feel like you feel right now. And that's the whole point. Thank you so much for joining me today. As always, I am so happy you have chosen to join me on my journey through personal development and self-love. I hope that my journey can inspire you to start your own journey or maybe just remind you that we are all trying to figure out this thing called life. So I hope to see you back next week and have a great day.